Good afternoon, and be sure to subscribe to Brain Drain for more tall tales and fun facts about everything from airports to amusement parks to athletics. Today, we double double down and go animal style on a red, white, and yellow California icon. It's time for quality you can taste on this in and out episode of Brain Drain. Crossed Palm Trees Every in and out is owned and operated by the Snyder family. Starting with Harry and Esther in 1948, and all the way to today with their granddaughter, Lindsay Snyder, who took over the presidency in 2010. The Snyder family has gracefully dealt with incredible family tragedy over the past seven decades. More on that later. But one way the company honors the past can be found in the parking lot of every restaurant. To pay homage to founder Harry Snyder, two cross palm trees have been planted at every In-N-Out restaurant since 1972. Harry Snyder's favorite movie was It's a Mad, 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 Mad World, which had treasure seekers searching for riches under four palm trees, which when planted resembled the letter W. In and out was Harry's treasure, and lo, the cross tree tradition began. 1948 Menu Before we get to today's secret menu and items you may not know about, let's go back to the future. It was the tried and true simplicity of the original 1948 location that made this burger joint a pioneering fan favorite. In and outs first location was just over 10 square feet at Francis Quito and Garvey in the Los Angeles suburb of Baldwin Park. Thanks to Harry Snyder tinkering with two-way speaker systems in his garage, in and out would become the first drive through hamburger stand in California. Drivers could order by talking to and through the speakers. This was different from rival car hops in California that had roller skating servers blade up to your window to take your order. The speaker system helped customers literally and figuratively get in and out. Secret Menu The secret menu isn't that secret, but it's a cool flex for curious first-time foragers. The infamous animal style was introduced on burgers in 1961. The chefs mustard cook the beef patty and add pickle, extra spread, grilled onions, and hand leaf lettuce and tomato. If you're carb conscious and want the spread but not the bread, go for protein style or the Flying Dutchman. Not interested in meat? Try the grilled cheese or the veggie burger. Really interested in meat? Carnivore for more with a 3x3, 4x4, or even a 5x5. Sounds like a lot, but these Mondo burgers are beloved enough that In-N-Out trademarked the Triple Triple and the Quad Quad. Even more outlandish secret menu options abound. Roadkill fries combine the Flying Dutchman with animal style fries. Wash it down with the rare Neapolitan shake, which is one part chocolate, one part vanilla, and one part strawberry milkshake. Other strange secret menu items exist but aren't offered at every In-N-Out. This includes a burger monkey style, which is simply animal style fries shoved into a double double. If you order a Tom with two M's at In-N-Out, you'll get a three by three between two grilled cheeses, which act as the golden crisp buns. Some adventurous eaters have even gotten away with a Thousand Island milkshake, curly cheese fries, and likely a stomach ache. People often leave with more than just food. We're talking swag. in and out merch. The first in and out t-shirt was designed in 1975 and featured a cartoon Fryman. Every year, a designer makes a shirt that's available for purchase in store and now online. More often than not, the shirt features the car and racing culture that Guy Snyder loved. Collections of these tees can go for gobs of money on the secondary market. Now, you can also buy pool floats, longboards, socks, sneakers, hoodies, jewelry, golf balls, dog toys, and more. Through the Vault 48 collection, you can even buy in and out art printed on canvas. Much of these products are sold to benefit the In-N-Out Burger Foundation and their Slave to Nothing Foundation. In-N-Out does an incredible amount in the noble fight against human trafficking. They put their beliefs out there for all to see. On their cups, burger wrappers, and fry boats, you will find biblical verses. John 3.16 on the soda cups, Proverbs 3.5 on the milkshake cups, Revelation 3.20 on the hamburger and cheeseburger wrappers, Nahum 1.7 on the double-double wrapper. The Snyder family has been through many struggles and attribute their continued ability to fight adversity and achieve success to their faith in God. Family Tragedy Current President Lindsay Snyder had to start running the show way earlier than expected. Lindsay's uncle Richard Snyder perished in a plane crash, and her father, H. Guy Snyder, died of an accidental drug overdose in 1999. Lindsay became the sole owner of In-N-Out when she turned 35 years old. Despite these hardships, In-N-Out is known for giving back, locally and globally. In 1974, the same year red aprons were introduced to the uniform, replacing the all-white attire for employees, the burger makers at In-N-Out grilled up some goodies for performers in the Tournament of Roses Parade in Pasadena, California. 
The company still supplies food for the musicians of Banfest and feed the participating football teams in the Rose Bowl game. Additionally, their Feed the Homeless events can be spotted at many of their now 358 locations. Speaking of locations, location, location, locations. After the original Baldwin Park location, the second in and out would be built at Azusa Canyon Road and San Bernardino Road. The third premiered in Pasadena, and the fourth was opened in Covina, California. In 1973, at the 25-year mark of the small company, the no-delay chain had 13 locations. All locations were two-lane drive throughs with no indoor dining. When Harry Snyder died in 1976, the company had 18 locations. The first indoor dining room and single-lane drive through in and out was established in Ontario, California in 1979. The organization never expanded too quickly and always wanted to know every detail of every business in every market it would enter. The first store outside of Greater Los Angeles would open in San Diego County in 1990. In 1992, Las Vegas, Nevada would be the first non-Southern California location. In 1993, Modesto played host to the first Northern California location. in and outs quickly populated the Bay Area. In 2000, Arizona began opening locations. Since the turn of the century, more locations have popped up in Nevada, Texas, Utah, Oregon, and Colorado, with an Idaho location soon approaching. The architecture inside and outside is identical at the majority of locations. However, there are some anomalies, including the Westwood, California location, which was designed by Stephen Kanner, and the Fisherman's Wharf San Francisco location, which is one of three in and outs without a drive through although the seals kind of like it. Oh, oh, oh. Since 1954, in and outs have featured their iconic arrow sign. See, I'm pointing to it right there. Employees have been known to say the arrow points to pride, or we all work under the same arrow. Aw, that's nice. In 1958, a few years after the arrow debuted, in and outs started serving fountain soda instead of soda out of glass bottles. Hard to imagine that this once little shop would drive through the future of fast food and grow to make nearly $600 million in revenue a year. Old Times Revisited Quality you can taste is what has kept customers coming back for 75 years. If you want to go back to the 40s, you sort of can. Visit the meticulously rebuilt replica of the original In-N-Out for photos and good post-war vibes in Baldwin Park, California. Enjoy it with family, just like Harry and Esther did because that's what a hamburger's all about. So, what's your favorite item off the secret menu? Do you know where they get those giant safety pins for those red aprons? Or those little paper hats? Either way, we're now officially hungry for a Tom with two M's from In-N-Out and for another video. Thanks for watching Brain Drain. I'm Tom Polos, and don't forget to subscribe. It's a no-brainer.